Gemini, what's going on? It's your girl D with 8th House Energy here to bring you your monthly May 2020 general read. I hope all is well with you guys as well as can be expected with what's going on in the uh, world here. I do want to tell you guys I appreciate all the Gemini energy that you bring to the channel. Thank you so much. Please keep it coming. You guys are amazing. Uh, if you need a personal reading or a natal chart analysis, uh, that information is in the box below the video, the description box below the video. Right underneath the video, if you look over towards the right side of the video, like below it in the little box, you'll see an arrow. If you if the box is not open, click that arrow. It opens up and it shows you all the information. Now, I do want to let you know, because it's tourist season, what I'm doing from now on for each of the signs is during your season, I'm going to offer 50% off of the tarot card readings. So you want to go down to the tarot card section of the um, information box. There's five readings there. Um, the numbers two, three, and four, readings number two, three, and four are going to be 50% off. Four, Taurus Sun, Taurus Moon, and Venus in Taurus. So if you're a Gemini who has a Taurus Moon or and or a Venus in Taurus, you will get 50% off of the tarot card readings number two, three, and four throughout um, Taurus season. And then for um, Gemini season, just keep in mind, I'll do that next month for you guys. So uh, Gemini Sun, Gemini Moon, Gemini Venus, you will get 50% off of readings two, three, and four of the tarot card section. And moving on. What I usually do, what I usually do with the general readings is I give you um, an astrological aspect of what's going on here with the planetary alignments because for most of you who are, you know, Gemini's are pretty intelligent. Most of you are anyway, not all, okay? Because some of you are the opposite end, which is airheads. But we're not talking about them. We're talking about the ascended Gemini, okay? Because this is what my readings, who are my readings, are geared towards. Um, so for the Ascended Gemini who understands that, understanding your natal chart and understanding the planetary alignments um, and co co um, collaborating them with what's going on in the real world helps you to navigate through the world and not be as, um, you know, stressed out and not what's going on. I usually will implement this into the general reading, the beginning of the general read. So what we got going on with the planetary alignments, let's talk about what's going on in your house. Venus is already in your house. Now, on a macro level, the way that we saw that happening, macro meaning on a planetary wide scale, the way that we saw that these energies were um, taking shape is that, you know, with the COVID-19 scare, a lot of people are online now dating, okay, looking at online apps because we can't go out anymore. We can't go out to social functions, you know, to where you may be able to meet people. You still have a few places you can go, like the laundromat, the grocery store, things like that. But, you know, as far as um, social gatherings, the government has cut that all out. So we can't do any of that. So a lot of people have gone online and started communicating online with people, going to dating apps, things like that, and communicating with their people online, the people that they love, whether it's family love or whether it's relationship love. Well, Venus is going to be in retrograde starting May 13th, okay? So what Venus in retrograde is talking about is it's talking about looking back at love relationships, all right? Looking back at the relationships you were in, um, whether it was family relationships, you know, with family members or good friends that you have a lot of love for or, you know, intimate partners. You may be, because, um, you know, your, your uh, sign rules or your house rules the environment, your local environment, local travel, like going to the grocery store, going to the gym, um, you know, going out to, you know, going over to your cousin's house or going to the library or going to school or whatever. It rules local environment and it rules your cousins and um, those parts of your family, your cousins, your aunts and uncles. So a lot of you are going to be, you know, if you're having any issues with family members on that line, you may be thinking about them. They may be thinking about you. You know, you may want to reach out to them. They may want to reach out to you. On a love tip, you know, you may be running into, you know, you may be out and about and you might run into one of those relatives. Um, on a love tip, you may be out and about and you may run into a past lover. You may be thinking about some past lovers. They may be thinking about you. OK, some people may reach out to you. You may feel compelled to reach out to somebody. OK, that's what's going on with the Venus in retrograde situation. Um, now, let's talk about uh, Capricorn, because Capricorn is the house of your business aspirations, your professional achievements, your moral standing. You know what's important to you as far as your ethics and your values, your your uh, rules within yourself, the rules that you set as to what you feel is right and what you feel is wrong. All right. So we got. Uh, Pluto there and we got Jupiter there. Now let's talk about Pluto first because Pluto's going in retrograde. We're going to have a total of three planets in retrograde in May. 
All right. So Pluto's in retrograde there on April 25th. That's when that starts. So you're already in the pre-shadow stages of that retrograde energy. Pluto is all about pulling energies from the subconscious. Gemini, you, you know, your, your ruling planet is Mercury. Mercury rules the conscious mind. Pluto rules the subconscious mind. So when Pluto's going into retrograde, what's happening is Pluto is pulling up any kind of subconscious energy that is keeping you from excelling in your um, career aspirations, uh, keeping you from excelling um, in your moral compass, in your moral fiber, setting that so that that's right based on what you feel is right. Um, it's also about your reputation, how people see you and how others see you. So it's going to be bringing up things that... Um, Pluto wants you to deal with because these things that you have pushed down in your subconscious are holding you back from excelling and, and, and ascending to your higher self. So the thing is, is that's a good thing. But the bad thing is, is that, you know, when Pluto comes through, Pluto is not knocking on the door saying, hey, can I come in? Pluto is coming and kicking in the door like the SWAT team. Boom, kicking in. We're making change, grabbing you up. And, you know, it's going to throw it right in your face. So it could be painful depending on what you've subconsciously blocked and, and put back in the back of your your mind. OK, now we got Jupiter um, in the same house, career aspirations, career goals, your reputation and your moral fiber and conf, um, your moral fiber and your moral being. We got Jupiter in the same house. Now, Jupiter is all about expansion and growth, good fortune, good luck. And for you ladies, when you look at your chart, Gemini, I'm sorry, Jupiter is uh, showing the characteristics of your ideal husband. OK, so with Jupiter going in retrograde, what Jupiter is going to make you do is Jupiter, when, when Pluto pulls all that energy up and makes you say, boom, I'm kicking in the door, I'm grabbing you, I'm throwing you in, in jail <laughs> because you need to deal with this. Right. This hypothetically, you know, um, Jupiter, while you're sitting in jail, Jupiter is going to make you think, what can I do to fix my life? How can I make this different? What can I do moving forward so that I'm okay? But this is in matters of your career, your goal, you know, your, your professional aspirations, your moral fibers, your moral standing. Okay, so this could be jail for some. Um, and um, it's going to make you look at things and say, okay, what can I do to change this? What's going to make me happy, right? So that's what um, Jupiter and, and Pluto are going to be doing when they're in retrograde, okay? So we got three planets total in retrograde. Now, the retrograde season is all about reflecting. It's not about making plans. Well, it is about making plans, but it's not about acting on anything. So what you're going to do is you're going to use retrograde energy, no matter what the retrograde is, wherever it's in that, whatever house it's in, use that as energy to um, sit back and reflect and to, you know, revise your plan or revise how you're going to go about things. And then when that retrograde in that house ends, then whatever plan you had in place, you move, you know, straight ahead with it. All right. Now. Taurus is in your, um, your, what is Taurus for you? Taurus is your 12th house. So we have Uranus there and we have, um, Mercury, your ruling planet going there on April 27th. So you're going to be, um, so Taurus is all about your monetary, how you make your money. Okay. Everybody likes to find out about that when they pull their chart. So Taurus is how you make your money, your money, make a potential. Taurus is also about your self value and your self worth. Now, I talked to you about Jupiter looking at your Jupiter. I'm sorry. We talked about the house of Capricorn, which deals with your reputation, how you see yourself, how people see you. Now, that information, along with um, Mercury and Taurus and Uranus and Taurus, Taurus is all about your self-value and self-worth. OK, so there's going to be a lot of changing in reference to how people see themselves, how they want people to see them. OK, with the combination of the planets that are in um Capricorn as well as what's in Taurus because Mercury is going to be in Taurus and Uranus is in Taurus. So Uranus is all about changing. OK, unexpected changes, surprises um, in your self-value, your self-worth, your monetary um, money making potential, your possessions, the things you own, real estate as well for some for those who own real estate. So there could be some changes there with that, or, um, you know, relocating, moving, trying to relocate, move problems with home. You know, finances in reference to what's going on with COVID, a lot of that going on. All right. So you're going to be thinking about this, um, you know, and trying to process this energy and um, go, while you're going through those changes. Now, as far as Aquarius is concerned, Mars is in there right now, um, but Mars is going to be going to Pisces on May 13th. 
So with Mars in Aquarius, that's people's desires to be around like-minded people, to find people who um, resonate with them, you know, to find your tribe, all right? So you got a lot of that going on, and also in survival mode as well. It's like, okay, who are the friends that I can look out, who are the friends that are going to look out for me in times like this, all right? So a lot of people are realizing who their real friends are, who their family is, you know, with this type of situation going on. A lot of that going on globally, okay? So all of that I'm talking about is going on globally as well. So you're not the only ones affected. Um, now we got Neptune in Pisces. Oh, we were talking about Aquarius. So yeah, Mars in Aquarius. So Aquarius is all about your social life, your friends. It's all about the humanitarian effort and like-minded people getting together for a common cause. So this could be your work environment as well. All right. So we got a lot going on in the work sector, of course, with COVID-19. We're seeing all of these things play out. So this is why I feel it's important to talk about the planetary alignments and what's going on so that you can correlate what planets I'm talking about versus what's actually happening. All right. So um, now we, with the Mars going into Mars is in Aquarius right now, but it's going into Pisces. Pisces, the house of Pisces is all about karma. It's all about institutions as well, like um, jails, nursing homes, uh, insane, what they call insane institutions or asylums detention centers, places where people go where they're secluded, rehabilitation centers, places where people go where they're secluded from society, okay? Um, so we have Mars going in there. Mars is all about survival. So, you know, even in these environments, it's all about survival. So with the COVID-19 thing going on, you're going to see a lot of people fighting for the rights. If you look at independent news um, environments and opposed to just the mainstream news, you'll see that there's a lot of things going on in the prisons, the detention centers, and the nursing homes uh, related to COVID and people are trying to fight for the rights of these people who really can't fight for themselves. So that's what that Mars and Pisces is going to be about. And Neptune's already there as well. Neptune's about glamorizing. It's about illusions. It's about a psychic ability. So you just want to make sure that, you know, you don't drift too far off. A lot of people are using this time to, because it's hard for them to cope. They, you know, Neptune deals with um, coping mechanisms, you know, um, escapism, you know, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is that you do to try to quell the nervousness in you or the anxiety in you. It could be prescription drugs, don't matter. So you have to be careful of that. You're going to see a lot of people, you know, using or dipping into that type of situation to cope. All right, what else do we got? I think that's it, you guys. Mercury, Taurus, Venus, Mars and Pisces, Jupiter, retrograde, Saturn. Oh, Saturn and Aquarius. One more. So Saturn is in Aquarius. Saturn is going to go retrograde in Aquarius. So that's the other planet that's going retrograde. Um, actually, there's four planets going retrograde, you guys. I lied. So there's Venus going retrograde in Gemini, um, Jupiter going retrograde in Capricorn, Pluto going retrograde in Capricorn, and Saturn going retrograde in Aquarius. All of this is going on in March. This is crazy. You've got four planets that are going to be in retrograde. Now, with Saturn um, in um, Aquarius... Saturn is all about rules, regulations, okay? Saturn is all about knowing your limits, what, you know, your moral compass, your moral standing, things like that. Like I talked to you about earlier with uh, with uh, Capricorn. Well, that's because Jupiter, uh, Saturn rules Capricorn. So what's going to be happening when Jupiter goes into um, retrograde in Aquarius? Aquarius is the house of like-minded people, your friends, um, organizations, people who get together for a common cause. So what we're seeing right now in reference to uh, Saturn and Aquarius is that the government is telling us we can't go out. You know, we can't go to bars. We can't go to, um, you know, establishments where groups of people can get together. Saturn is the rule. Aquarius is is the like-minded or people getting together for organization. Now, we're going to have that going in retrograde. Saturn is going to be going in retrograde. So what that's telling me is, and that's starting on May 10th. So as you've been seeing in the news already, you see a lot of states, they are loosening up their... Um, government regulations in reference to where people can go and what they can't do. It's like, okay, first you couldn't go. Now you can go. You just have to have a mask on, you know, and things like that. So those things are going to start loosening up. Those rules and regulations are going to start loosening up. All right. So thanks for those who, you know, can't deal with this and don't understand it. But those who understand and what's going on, I just want to give you an understanding so that you would be able to see what's going on. Now, the Six of Cups is what's coming up as the overall energy. So this is all about, um, it could be about your children. This could be about reminiscing about the past, um, a past life situation, a past life love. Um, Six of Cups is Scorpio energy here, all right? And um, with that energy, we're talking about, you know, nostalgia. It could also be about gifts, okay? Innocence, reunions. 
And then we have the star card, which is major arcana Aquarius energy. We were just talking about Aquarius. Now, um, uh, the star energy is major arcana. This represents having hope, having faith, inner clarity, you know, believing in miracles. This is also about healing and being in the spotlight. And then we have the king of pentacles in reverse. This is a uh, Taurus energy. King of pentacles in reverse is somebody who could be very greedy, somebody who's having financial difficulties, um, somebody who is um, has no follow through, somebody who um, is not, you know, is having problems providing for their family. OK, so um, with the children here and the king of pentacles in reverse, this for some of you, this could be you, you know, looking back at your childhood, you know, looking at your children like, damn, you know, I'm having financial issues with this covid. I might have gotten laid off. I'm trying to have faith that I can get this money so that I'll be able to take care of my children. This is for some of you. This is just you re reminiscing on back, you know, on how things were financially. And, you know, the situation now is you're having problems, you know, and it's like. A every man for themselves type of energy is what I'm picking up with these cards. Now, as far as the current energy here, I have the six of swords reversed. Somebody feeling stuck. They can't move. They can't relocate. They can't um, mentally. They're stuck. You know, they're stuck in a thought process. And this could re represent overthinking. OK, which is, you know, you're trying to resolve an issue, trying to figure out how to take care of something. But you can't come up with any more ideas because you're stuck for whatever reason. And this could have something to do with the COVID-19. Um, a lot of you Gemini energy is is all about being able to move. I don't know too many Geminis that like to sit someplace. I know this is driving you guys crazy, this COVID-19 thing. Um, I can think of a couple of Gemini friends that I have. It's like, you know, they'll come over. They're like, all right, well, what you doing? I'm like, nothing. They'll say, all right, well, I'm coming over. So they'll come over and they'll be like, um, you're not dressed? Let's get dressed. Let's go. Come on, we got to get out of the house. We got to go do something. I'm like, you don't want to just, no, come on, let's go, let's go. If you don't want to go anywhere, then I'm going to go somewhere and then I'll come back when I'm done. Like, you guys don't like to sit around. So I can understand that you're feeling kind of stuck with what's going on here. Um, now, the energies that are positively and negatively affecting this energy here is the Seven of Swords. What's up with this? Mm. Now, Seven of Swords energy. This is, you know, you trying to... Figure out a way to get what it is that you need to get. And you're doing it in a manner which you're thinking about this. You're not letting anybody know what you're thinking. But whatever it is that you're thinking, it could be at a disadvantage to someone else is what I'm getting here. Um, or you could be putting yourself in a situation where you're going to jeopardize yourself in some way, shape, or form. But we'll see how this unfolds as we uh, move forward. So we got the Six of Swords reverse. Clarify with the Seven of Swords. So being stuck. Now, if this is in reference to, um, you know, someone trying to plan something illegal, um, you know, just remember that Saturn is in Aquarius right now. You don't want to get caught out there. OK, you really don't want to do that. You know, you may be getting together with some friends on a, a different you know, page here on a different note for some of you. You know, times are hard out here with COVID-19, so you're going to be. You may not directly be involved, but there may be, may be people around you or people that you least suspect, people who you don't suspect. They could be scheming to get what it is that they need to get because financial times are hard. Um, I'm, I, I wouldn't be sure, but I would guesstimate and assume that crime has gone up because of, you know, the lack of money, the lack of resources, people losing their jobs, people being laid off, not having enough money. Unemployment issues with people getting their money. A lot of people didn't get their tax money. So there's this is a, a very um, dire time for people. OK, so you got a lot of people who could be scheming. And they're just basically focused on what it is that they have to do, because unfortunately, they have to feed their families. OK, is what I'm getting here. Um, also, what I'm getting for some of you is that, you know, something that you did may have come back to haunt you. OK, and you may have to answer for it. Now, in the past, we have the emperor in reverse. Like I said, people losing their jobs. OK, or this could be, you know, people who are not spending their money properly here. These two cards here with the emperor in reverse and the king of um, pentacles in reverse. This could talk to me about an employee or an employer type of situation where, you know, there might have been something that was going on in reference to misappropriation of funds, perhaps. And you're kind of at a point where you may be stuck in whatever it was that you were doing. You can't do it anymore or you may have gotten caught or you're trying to avoid getting caught 
or, you know, um, you know, you may have had a plan in place and now that's not working anymore and you're losing money. Whatever the case is, there's a thousand and one scenarios with this situation based on just these cards here alone. Um, but there's definitely an issue with money and there's definitely um, someone who is looking to get what they can get no matter what. OK, this is like a situation where. You know, this is what happens when you have people who are unemployed and people who are not working and people who are not able to go out and make money because, they, you know, these are a lot of people who lost their jobs and lost their money making potential because they're used to being able to go out. Like I said, Gemini's, I don't know if they, I mean, I'm sure there's some Gemini's who work from home, but, you know, you guys like to be out and about and socialize with people. And so because with COVID-19 going on, you may have a hard time doing that and that could stifle your money situation. So some of you could be looking at ways to figure out without letting people know, you know, what you can do to get your money. Now, in the more recent past, we have the nine of more swords energy, nine of swords in reverse energy. Nine of swords in reverse energy. This energy talks to me about letting go of, of, of torment, emotional torment. Okay. Um, this could be a love situation as well too, but I don't see any hearts here yet, but we'll see. Um, but this is just in general, a situation where someone was really stressed about something. We got the six to seven and the nine of swords, six and nine are in reverse here. Okay. So, um, this could talk about heartbreak because if you do negative six minus negative nine, you get negative three. That's the three of swords broken hearted. Okay. Um, this could have been a relationship here because we have the emperor in reverse. So this could have been someone who was married. Um, we have the king of pentacles and we have the, the six of cups here. So this could represent a marriage where there's children. Okay. Um, and maybe you're hoping to work things out with someone. So I'm getting that too. But let's see what the crowning energy is here. We have the queen of pentacles again. So now we have the king and the queen of pentacles showing up in the reading. So this is definitely in reference to um, a couple. OK, and this definitely has to do with money. All right. And someone deceiving someone out of money. So with the Queen of Pentacles here, this could represent the mother figure because um, she's she's usually someone who is a mother, very nurturing, someone who can provide um, stability uh, for someone. Usually when the Queen of Pentacles um, energy shows up, this is someone who will allow you to stay with them, someone who will provide you food, they'll provide you whatever you need. Um, and they'll take care of your children as well. So we got the six of uh, cups here and the queen of pentacles. So this is something about children, uh, a couple here. I don't know if this is a couple deceiving one another or somebody lying about money and a job and not having a job. But in the future here, we have the fool energy, major arcana. So this is what's coming up. This is Uranus energy and Uranus is in Taurus. Okay. Taurus is about your money making potential. So Uranus is all about unexpected changes, surprises, or, or doing something different, doing something new. And with the full energy here, this is definitely what this is talking about here. This is why it's important to understand the planetary alignments and what's going on. So there's some type of, um, in the future, there's somebody who's looking at things and maybe they're looking at the way that they did things and, and how they got money and they may be interested in doing something that they've never done before. So this could represent somebody who was doing something illegally. Now they're deciding they want to do it the right way, or it could be in reverse. Somebody who is walked the straight and narrow and now with COVID going on and a lack of money making potential, this could be somebody who's considering doing something illegal to provide for the family. Now, in your fears, we have the two of swords. So this is indecision. OK, this is Libra energy. You you're in your indecision could be about breaking the law because Libra deals with the law. OK, so you're you, you know, you're afraid of getting caught. You're afraid of, of what the what's going to happen, the repercussions and the ramifications of um, something that was going on that could have been illegal here. OK, because with these two in reverse, this could be um, some type of legal illegal activity going on in the workplace and or in the home environment. Now, your um, how people see you, Gemini. Ooh, okay. We got the Eight of Pentacles in reverse. So see, people see you as someone who currently is not employed. Okay. Or what could happen is people could see you as someone who is trying to fix a relationship or wants to fix a relationship. <coughs> Excuse me. Someone could see you as uh, someone who has lack of ambition in reference to getting a job. 
They could also see you as someone who is lack of focus. So this definitely talks to me, um, these cards here, about someone who has lack of ambition in getting a job. This is someone who just wants to make some quick money. Okay, and with this Seven of Swords, you're hoping not to get caught. All right, um, but you're stuck. You're not sure what to do because there's a lot of indecision here. But recently with the Nine of Swords, um, this is someone who's being tormented by this, okay? I don't know if there was maybe something that was done in the past, um, but you're not stressed about it anymore. There was some stress, but you're not stressed about it anymore. But people see you as someone who's not working or, you know, not wanting to work on this situation. Now in your hopes, whoops, we have the King of Cups. So you're hoping um, that someone either shows you um, support, gives you support. Or you're hoping to be supportive of someone. The King of Cups, he is a very supportive person, very tolerant. You're hoping that. So this could be a situation where in the past you did someone wrong. Okay, with the Emperor energy. Um, and it's been on your mind recently. It's been on your mind a lot. And then you recently feel like, okay, I want to make a move towards this to correct this situation. You know, um, you could have been, this could have been someone in a relationship who was very kind to you. Someone who maybe you stayed with, lived with, someone who maybe provided for you. Because at that time when you were with them, you didn't have any money. You didn't have a job because this is how this person sees you. Okay. And you could be feeling regret about the situation and you could be having hope. Yeah, because you're looking back at it in the past. So you could be having hope about the situation and you're hoping that this person will be loving to you and you're hoping that you can be loving to them and that they're supportive and that they're empathetic towards you coming back to them. All right. And then the outcome here is the seven of pentacles. So the seven of pentacles talks about patience. It talks about um, being able to um, work hard. So somebody's willing to put in work in this situation. Somebody is willing to work hard. So this could be a matter of somebody who lost it. This, this could be a couple different things. Somebody could have lost their job. And so, you know, they're looking to put in work because they're trying to keep themselves on a straight and narrow without having to, you know, go out and do something. Or what could be going on is um, the storyline that I've been picking up with Gemini for the last couple of months. This could represent the person that you're currently with and that you have children with. Again, because we have the King of, of Pentacles in reverse here. This King of Pentacles is unemployed, doesn't have money. Um, the Queen of Pentacles is the one who um, takes care of the whole household. She takes care of the King of Pentacles in reverse because he has no money with the Eight of Pentacles in reverse. And she takes care of the children. So she takes care of everybody. Okay? And so there could be situations going on where you're feeling stuck with this person because you can't move and relocate because you don't have money. Okay. And so, you know, this was a lot of torment for you, but you've decided now that you're going to sneak off. Okay. So you could be sneaking off to start something new with someone from the past, someone that you dipped out on before, someone that you treated poorly before in the past. Okay. Um, or if this is not what you did, Gemini, this is some, what someone did to you. So someone could be coming back to you. Remember, Venus is in Gemini. So this is about a love situation here. It could be about work, but I'm picking up love strongly here. So somebody wants to go back to the past. Gemini, somebody could be coming back to you. They could be leaving the person that they're with. But the thing is, is the way that they're leaving this person is they're leaving this person under a, a situation where there's negative karma. They have faith that you guys can work things out. OK, they definitely want to put in the work with the seven of pentacles here and um, they know it's going to take um, they know that this person is not going to just take them back, you know, just like that. But they have faith because this is a person who they're connected to from a past life. OK, and they believe that this is the person they're supposed to be with. Now, um, there's a couple other signs that are going through this as well, where they were with their karmic and they want to leave their karmic to go back to be with who they, you know, supposed to be with. But that person that they were supposed to be with is somebody they left in the past and did dirty. Why the Seven of Swords is here. Exactly why. So, um, yeah, and so with the fear, it's like you don't know what to do. You want to leave, but then you're afraid to do so. Or the person is afraid to do so. They're afraid. They're in indecision. They've been in indecision for a long time. This has been going on damn near a year, Gemini. 
I know because I've been doing your readings. So, you know, as far as how this person sees you, the person that you're with, they could see you as somebody. Um, so, for example, if this is the Gemini who wants to go back to that other person, either the person could see you as someone who didn't bring in money. OK, because this person could have been taking care of you or could have been looking out for you financially at some point in time in the past and you were taking advantage of them. This is why this is in the past. You went back to the person that you have children with and that didn't work out. And so now you're, you're feeling stuck with them and um, now you're ready to dip off from them and go back to the person who was kind to you, who was loving to you. And you're hoping to work things out with them. You're praying that, you know, things do work out. You could see them as someone who's doing well. And that could be why you're going back. So your ulterior motive could be to go back to get finances from them. Okay. Um, or if this is you, Gemini, somebody could be coming back to you. All right. And this could have been someone who things didn't work out with in the past. This could have been somebody who could have been financially manipulating you or trying to or just taking advantage of you for what you had. So I don't know. In the, in the extended, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the extended. And in the extended, we're going to find out what's the what's this person's um, true intentions. Are they coming back because they realize that you're their partner? Or are they coming back because they see that you're doing well or they heard you're doing well? And now they just want to try to take advantage again. So the extended, in the link for the extended is in the box below. So feel free to follow um, if you would like. Other than that, what I'm going to do for those of you who are not going to be able to follow, I'm going to get you some advice and we're going to move on to the extended. So we have blessed. Number 22, major arcana. That's a master number. I don't break down master numbers because you should not. So that is not going to equal a four. That's going to stay a 22. So you may want to Google master number 22, um, especially if the re reading so far doesn't resonate with you. Maybe the information from master number 22 will resonate with you. Um, so number 22 talks about something wonderful that is unearned or unexpected, a grace that is unforeseen, a gift from spirit. So this could be what this star card is representing here. OK, now we know that this is a friend or a family member or a loved one because, you know, that's what the House Aquarius rules. It rules your friends, your social life. All right. So let's talk about protection here. So it says hum humility is called for now as grace is an unearned gift. You didn't gain this by your own desires or actions. To be who you need to be, you can no longer do what you did. In a way, you have hit rock bottom, okay? Nine of Swords reverse. This is about hitting rock bottom, all right? And then it says, um, in a way, you hit rock bottom, and what is required now is nothing less than total surrender. Then you will be blessed. So this is this person realizing that they have to be patient, okay? And then at that point, they will receive their blessings. But, you know, this person is having hope and faith in this situation. All right. So what I want to do is I want to go to the extended and find out what this person's intentions are for the person that they're going back to, to see if they're going back to this person to take advantage of them or if they're going back to this person because they truly realize that this is who they're supposed to be with. All right. So Jim and I, we're going to find out what this person's intentions are. All right. Um, and if you are someone who's cross watching for a Gemini and you uh, feel that a Gemini is coming back to you, we're going to let you know if their intentions are pure or not in the extended. All right.